Hello again, I am Blunty. I didn't go to CES this year. I've only been once, and that was way back in 2013. And it was awesome. And Vegas is? Well, you know what they say about what happens there. This year's CES, though, has just ended and had some neat stuff shown off, some of which I might make some videos about. And if you follow a lot of the larger tech tuber types who did go to CES this year, you'll have seen pretty much all of them make a video about their impressions on something called the Alienware UFO. And it's not actually a real product. It's a concept, barely a prototype, a barely working prototype at that. It was made to attract attention of tech bloggers and show off Alienware's product design skills and get Alienware's name in a few more headlines. And it did exactly that. It worked brilliantly for that. I've seen this everywhere. It's pretty cool looking and basically everyone I've seen report on this describe it as a new concept in PC gaming and slash or a PC version of the Nintendo Switch. Except it's neither of those things. It's not a new concept, and the Nintendo Switch wasn't even the first stab at this kind of form factor, so if anything, the Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's version of this concept. The practical idea of this form factor, real and proper console or desktop class gaming onto a handheld device instead of the significantly lower power and compromised handheld devices we had had, really came into focus the first time I saw a practical product of this kind, and it was way back at that 2013 CES. It was called the Razer Edge and Razer Edge Pro. And I want to play some of what I said back then because it is still relevant today, and I was kind of predicting the future. Pat myself on the back. And it was all those seven long years ago, back in a world that predated the launch of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and the current generation of gaming, basically, and half a decade before Nintendo came out with their Switch. Hello again, I am Blunty. This is the Razer Edge. It claimed eight different awards at CES earlier this year, and it's the world's most, most powerful, powerful tablet. tablet and a tablet built for, and pretty much by, PC gamers. And before I get into some more basic hands-on pre-review stuff, let's set the scene a little bit. So gaming is going through, well, puberty right now, and things are getting kind of awkward and spazzy. With smartphone gaming surging, there has been a sudden flood of quirky, but you know, some quite serious attempts to meld the casual gaming heavy handheld phone and tablet gaming scene with the established and mature monster of console and PC gaming. Claimed as the first tablet designed for PC gamers, it's a nice 10 inch high def IPS multi touch screen. It's got proper PC powerhouse hardware inside its guts, running with either a third gen Intel Core i5 CPU or Core i7 in the Pro model, 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAMs, and it'll burn all your polygons down with a NVIDIA GeForce series graphics processor with its own gigabyte of RAM. Try and think of it as a hardcore gaming laptop with the keyboard torn off, rather than trying to equate it with the tablets you're now familiar with and you're getting an idea of what it's all about. You can of course attach a keyboard to it for those games that need some rather more complex control schemes, or for boring regular PC tasks, I don't know, like spreadsheets and emailing your nan or something. You can use it in pure tablet mode, or you can bolt on the gaming control rig and play in what they call mobile console mode. Hell, you can even pop it in a dock and use regular game pads. Even use it to drive your big screen TV in your living room. So who needs one of those so-called Steam boxes now anyway, eh? Out of all the currently pulsating permutations different companies are trying out to see who can get a real foothold in this newest of gaming ages, I think I'm in the Razer Edge Pro camp. I think it offers way more power, way more flexibility, less screwing around, no need to have a separate PC to stream your PC games to it like the Project Shield thingy. I liked it. It was a clean, elegant and attractive design. The screen was lovely and as you've been seeing it's got plenty of grunt to shift around games like Skyrim, no problems. Because of its tablet form factor, some people may lament not being able to easily upgrade the guts of it like you can with a full-on tower gaming rig thingy, but, you know, it's the same deal with gaming laptops, and those are popular too. In fact, I use a gaming laptop as opposed to a big, bulky, cumbersome, full-on gaming rig thingy. But it's designed to be out of the box what gamers want. And it should be what gamers want. Gamers helped build the damn thing. The production and design of this thing was kind of crowdsourced. Razer let the PC gaming community tell them what chipset it should have, what features it should have, and even what price they'd be willing to pay for it. Prices start, by the way, at 999 Yankee dollary dues. 
it's an utterly unprecedented move to have gamers help you design a product for themselves, and one that earned Razer a big pile of goodwill and respect from the PC gamers out there. So there you are. Unprecedented, class-leading technology. A solution delivered, in what is now hindsight, many years ahead of its time. Razer nailed it and they barely even noticed they did. The product flopped, and it was abandoned pretty much immediately. It never had a follow-up. I never managed to secure a review sample, and I never knew anyone who ever used one. But I think Razer deserves some props here for honing right in on the form factor and concept that would later, many years later, would bring Nintendo back again from the brink of disaster with the Wii U. And as much props as they deserve for that, they deserve some jeers as well for not sticking to their goddamn guns and keep evolving this idea. Imagine a world where this had become a proper product line. Imagine if they were still updating it today. Imagine what something like this can be capable of with today's huge leaps forward in mobile CPU and mobile GPU power and efficiencies from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. They're leagues ahead of what we had access to seven years ago with the with the mobile NVIDIA chipsets they were using in these things and in gaming laptops back in the day. These days, we have properly desktop-class GPUs sitting at our gaming laptops, and the CPUs have gotten faster and faster and more and more cores and more and more power efficient. Imagine what the world would be like if this was a thing today. Well, I guess Alienware are doing that imagining for you. I wonder if, now that everyone's on board with the Switch hype train, Nintendo have proved it's a concept that can work and work superbly well, and with Nintendo's console in your hand selling faster than any other console on the planet right now, even rapidly outselling the PS4 in Japan within two years despite it launching three years after it. So be prepared for more companies with skills in designing gaming laptops to follow suit and try and make a Switch-like, or rather a Rager Edge-like PC gaming device capable of handheld desktop and TV docked modes. I mean, we're already seeing a trend in ultralight laptops having detachable keyboards for tablet and laptop modes. And AMD's newly announced at this CES 4000 series chipsets for powerful mobile class CPU and GPU may be the key to this becoming more practical and affordable than ever. It is not without compromise. As I said all those many years ago, it's the same compromises a gaming laptop buyer has to make, really. But the benefits and convenience, those are the reasons why gaming laptops still sell so well. And is it enough for you in a gaming-specific device? Oh, and by the way, other tech channels, stop blowing smoke up Dell's bum. They didn't invent this. It's not a new concept. All they did was take their turn to throw it at the wall and see if it sticks this time. That said, I bloody love the design of Alienware's go on this. It looks slick as F, in my humble opinion. I hope it becomes a real product. And if it does, you better be begging for a review sample. (laughs) Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.